William Price was born on the 4th of March 1800 in the small village of Rydry near Caerphilly, Wales. He came from a known family in the area as his hard-working ancestors established a small family fortune. His father, also called William, graduated from Jesus College, Oxford, becoming an ordained priest of the Church of England. Yet, he later suffered from schizophrenia, and by the time he was 30, was listed as a lunatic. Meanwhile, his mother was an illiterate housemaid. Her lower social standing made the marriage quite controversial. Together, the couple had seven children, with William being the fifth. Sadly, only four of the seven survived into later life. William's childhood was quite challenging. His family lived in poverty and relied on cash from wealthier Price relatives to get by. Furthermore, William's father had a very peculiar way of acting. Many strange stories about him exist, such as that he bathed in local ponds, at times naked or fully clothed, and that he collected snakes and left them in his pockets for days at a time. This strange behaviour worsened, leading to him experiencing bouts of rage and anger. On one occasion, he fired a gun at a woman for taking sticks from his hedgerow. He was also known to throw sharp objects at locals. As he was a danger, not only to the community, but also to himself, his family frequently tied him to his bed or armchair. At the age of 10, William attended the local school in Machin. Here, he learnt English, as at home, he only ever spoke Welsh. As time passed, he showed his intellectual capabilities, doing well in all of his exams. At 13, young William Price decided to pursue a path in medicine, despite his father insisting that he become a solicitor. His decision was likely due to a number of factors, including his father's mental disorder, the illness that took the lives of his infant brothers, and the poor health of workers in the local area. In 1814, Price moved to Caerphilly after securing an apprenticeship to a successful young surgeon called Dr. Evan Edwards. For around five years, Price worked under Evans, which was funded by various family members. Once the apprenticeship was over, Price went on to study at the London Hospital in Whitechapel and St. Bartholomew's Hospital under some of the country's best surgeons. Price did very well and in October 1821, he became a member of the Royal College of Surgeons at only 21 years old. A great achievement, considering his background. Following this, he returned to Wales in order to begin working as a general practitioner. Price rented a farmhouse in Pontypridd, which served as his place of work. During this period in time, the south of Wales experienced a huge population increase due to the expanding iron industry. By 1823, Price had become very important within the local community. He was appointed as a surgeon by some of the main employers in the area, including Brown Lennox Chain Works and Treforest Timplate Works. Furthermore, he was the medical advisor to the wealthy Crawshay family who owned Tree Forest Timplate Works. As a young man, he gained influence in his local community thanks to his medical expertise. Despite his relatively humble background, he even mixed with the Welsh upper classes, attending champagne balls at Saifartha Castle. However, as he grew older, his eccentric behaviour increased. Although it wasn't to the same extent as his father's, it seemed that this maverick nature ran in the family. A known nudist, Price would race around the hills near Pontypridd completely naked. Price had many strong beliefs which strayed from the social norms of the time. He was completely against marriage and maintained that it led to the enslavement of women as it took away their freedom. Instead, Price believed in free love. Over the years, he fathered many illegitimate children. His opinions inevitably led to many issues with church authorities. Unlike most people of the time, Price was very careful when it came to hygiene. He considered coins to be very contaminated, 
and so he always washed them. He even thought that socks were unhygienic, and never wore them. This obsession with hygiene likely came from him realising that industrialization was having serious negative effects on the health of the working classes. Price was no ordinary Victorian doctor. He was strict in his convictions and led a very healthy lifestyle. Price believed in natural remedies, such as healthy food, fresh air and exercise. Keeping in line with this, he was an early advocate of vegetarianism. According to him, eating meat brought out the beast in man. Furthermore, he was completely against smoking, even refusing to treat patients who couldn't kick the harmful addiction. Furthermore, he established an example of the social healthcare system by only charging patients what they could afford. Following this, workers paid him weekly deductions from their wages, and in return got free treatment. This system grew in popularity in the Welsh coal fields, and would eventually lead to Britain's National Health Service. Meanwhile, he criticised many fellow practitioners, stating they were nothing but poison peddlers. He believed that instead of treating the cause of the illness, they preferred to take advantage of the sick by selling their drugs, making them wealthier. During the early 19th century, the Welsh identity seemed lost. The English language was beginning to grow in Britain. Meanwhile, the number of Welsh speakers dwindled. Dr Price, a proud Welsh nationalist, loved his country, language, culture and history, and he recognised this loss of identity. Throughout the 1820s and 30s, Price became increasingly interested in Welsh cultural activities. He was heavily influenced by the neo-Druid Edward Williams, or Iola Morgunk, and became fascinated with reviving the ancient Celtic religion. Although Morgunk greatly contributed to Welsh culture, reignited an interest in its preservation and study, much of his evidence, such as manuscripts, were actually fabricated. Price, determined to encourage other Welshmen to embrace their nationality, joined a neo-Druidic group that gathered at the Rocking Stones in Pontypridd for Druidic ceremonies. Price's commitment and abilities meant that by 1837 he became a leading member of the group. One of Price's most ambitious aims was to raise funds for the Museum of Welsh Druidic Life, but he ultimately failed. Yet, the revival of the Welsh identity wasn't Price's only cause. He was also a believer in Chartism, which aimed to make the political system more democratic by giving working class men a vote. Price was appointed as the Chartist leader in South Wales and for months he used his influence to galvanise support for the cause. Due to a lack of progress in Parliament, the movement's leader, John Frost, believed it was time to resort to other means. Price was a militant supporter of Chartism and acquired seven pieces of field artillery as well as arms for fellow supporters. Apparently, he also used Welsh language lessons as cover for gun training. With thousands of militant Chartists ready to rebel against the government, on the 4th of November 1839, the Newport Rising took place. However, in spite of the 10,000 Chartist sympathisers who marched on the town of Newport, the authorities quickly stomped out the large-scale armed rebellion. Despite Price being influential in the movement, he feared that the rising would fail, and decided to not take part. Soon after this, the government launched an investigation and tried all the main leaders of the movement. Afraid that he would be sentenced, Price disguised himself as a woman and fled to France, staying there until the Chartist investigations were over. While in France, he continued his research into Druidic legends it was during this time that he experienced a turning point in his religious life. One day, Price was visiting the Louvre when a 2000 year old Greek stone caught his eye. He immediately became obsessed by its hieroglyphics 
and interpreted the stone's inscriptions. Although mistaken in his interpretation, according to Price, the stone foretold of a man who would liberate the Welsh people. He believed that man was him. So, when it was possible, he returned to Wales in hopes of leading his people into a new age of enlightenment. Back in Wales, he established himself as a true Druid. He even founded a new religious Druidic group, although his success was limited. Keeping in line with his new lifestyle, Price adopted a very strange dress sense. His clothes were tailor-made and his usual outfit included green trousers, a red waistcoat and a fox fur hat with the animal's legs dangling over his shoulders. He also stopped cutting his beard and hair, letting it grow very long, as it had possibly been done by ancient druids. Price also carried a staff, which was engraved with figures and words from a language that he invented. Price stated that it was the true language of the ancient Welsh, and that only true druids could understand it. One idea that remained with Price was the construction of a museum to showcase Welsh Druidic life. Price hoped that the museum would attract people from all over Europe, so it had to be grand. Finally, in 1855, he commissioned the building of the Round Houses of Glintaf to act as a gateway to the museum. Yet, Price didn't actually own this land. His landlord, Benjamin Hall, rejected building the museum, which meant that Price fell into debt and in order to avoid his creditors, he once again fled to France. Living in France, Price's research seemed to become increasingly random and fanatical. He claimed that the Greek poet Homer was in fact born in South Wales and built Caerphilly Castle. His reasoning behind this was an ancient Chinese text. Furthermore, he proclaimed himself to be Lord of the Southern Welsh. It wasn't until 1866 that Price returned to Wales. Despite his old age, Price was still hopeful that he could have a son. Ever the ladies man, he impregnated three different women. Sadly for Price, his children were all daughters. In 1871, he published a book called The Will of My Father, in which he prophesied that Christianity would disappear in Britain. Instead, the population would revert back to its pagan ancestry. Moreover, the person who would accomplish this would be his firstborn son. That same year, he left Treforest and moved to the medieval town of Landtrezunt. Despite the town being on the decline, it was a true Druidic settlement, as the Celtic community there went back over 1,000 years. Price opened a new surgery in the town, which resulted to be quite successful. Despite Price's views on marriage, on the 4th of March 1881, which also happened to be his 81st birthday, he wed a farmer's daughter called Gwenthian Thewellyn, who was just 21 years old. To consolidate the marriage, a druidic wedding ceremony took place at the Rocking Stones in Pontrapid. A large audience was attracted by the ceremony. Reports stated that they found the ritual quite comical. Eventually, Price's wife bore him a son on the 8th of August, 1883. The boy was named Iesu Grist, which is Welsh for Jesus Christ. Despite the high hopes that Price had for his son, he died in his arms just five months later. Although in Victorian Britain, the custom was burial, Price believed that cremation was a much better method. Graves occupied lots of space and led to the spread of disease. So he decided to cremate his son's body, despite it being seen as taboo, especially by the church. Price held the funeral on a cold Sunday afternoon on the 13th of January, 1884. He timed the funeral precisely so that churchgoers leaving evening service could see the flames coming from the hilltop. Hundreds of local people climbed the hill to see what was going on. Once a constable kicked the burning cask 
and the baby corpse rolled out. The crowd turned on him. Fortunately, Price was rescued by the police, but he was promptly arrested for the illegal disposal of a corpse. It should be noted that his son's body was intact. The two-day trial was a sensation. Thousands followed the proceeding, curious to see how the judge James Stephen would rule. Price was well versed in litigation, as he had defended himself and others before in court as a hobby. He was also a fantastic orator. During his trial he stated, It is not right that a carcass should be allowed to rot and decompose in this way. It results in a wastage of good land, pollution of the earth, water and air, and is a constant danger to all living things. Furthermore, the law did not implicitly declare cremation as illegal, so Price was acquitted. Following his victory in court, Price's son's corpse was returned to him. Finally, on the 14th of March, he was able to cremate his son. This case, as well as pressure from the Cremation Society of Great Britain, led to the Cremation Act of 1902, which regulated the burning of human remains by establishing crematoriums. The court case turned Price into a famous figure in Britain. Never one to miss out on an opportunity, Price sold thousands of oval coins at three pence each to commemorate his son's cremation. He went on to father two more children by his wife and finally died in his home in Lantrisant on the 23rd of January 1893. His final words were directed to his wife after he declined her offer of a cider saying, no, give me more champagne. Price enjoyed one last glass of his favourite drink and then passed away shortly afterwards. William Price had left careful instructions surrounding how he wanted his funeral to take place. His wife made sure that these wishes were fulfilled, but it was no easy task. Price's body was cremated in a coffin on top of various tons of coal, overlooking the town of Lantrisant. Tickets were even sold for this event, and it said that 20,000 people attended. Price was carried from his home, followed by his family, who were all dressed in traditional Welsh clothing. Thank you everyone for watching this video on Dr. William Price. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. And if you're new, why not subscribe? I struggled with the Welsh pronunciations a bit, but I gave it my best shot. Anyway, I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.